Hey everybody, Big Mess here with How to Tie with your guy Shannon from Tuckasegee Fly Shop. In my fly, uh, Norvice fly tying system today, I have the fly that I guide with that we call the GST, green shiny thing. Then you can find these in the bins there to shop as well. This one here just happens to be tied on a fulling mill, 5045 jig force black nickel uh, barbless hook, size 16. And paired with that today, I've actually got a 2.4 millimeter black slotted tungsten bead from Fulling Mill as well. So let me go ahead and take that out right there and let's get one of these bad boys tied up there for you. Simple, quick tie. Uh, really could kind of fall into that series of, uh, you know, uh, guide flies that uh, we often get asked about there uh, on the water. So I'm going to take some black thread here. This is just a 12-0 variety. Just use the, you know, the color thread that you like best. I want to build up a little bit of a thread dam in behind that bead because I am not doing any extra wraps on this particular fly or nymph. My tail material is real simple. Just going to be some uh, speckled uh, uh, Coke de Leon right there. Use the color that you have lying around your desk. It's not too important to be honest with you there. This is the point where we complicate things more than we need to. So the tail, we're going to make it kind of about the length of the of the shank, uh, thereabouts. You know what I like to do is is start it on my side and let the thread wraps kind of carry that up to the top. Make a couple of loose wraps, and then I can come in here and I can adjust the length of that tail, just like so. I like that right there. I'm just going to reach in, and snip those off, and I'm just going to use the rotating feature on my Norvice to tie that bad boy in just like that. Snip in here and get those little loose hands. Beautiful. The next material, guys, this is super simple. And gals, it's just some uh, Vivas quill body in olive. It's it's all it is. It's, it's super simple. It comes on a spool. It's easy to use. It makes some great bodies. And I'm just gonna take a loose wrap right here, get that captured. I'm gonna pull that back there. I'm gonna traditionally tie that into that point I'm going to secure this in my materials clip on the back. I'm going to let my Norvice do the work for me. Put a half hitch in up here by the bead. And now all I've got to do is take my material. You can control the tension on this bad boy. So I've got it right there to where I'm just using my finger just to wrap this up the way I would do hackle. Or you can loosen it up to more and let it free spin just a little bit more. So the more you use your Norvice, the better you get at that, and then you'll know kind of what you want to do. So I've got this body tied up. Bring my thread back over using my auto bobbin. I want to capture that material, put in a few wraps behind and in the front. That's it. All there is to it. That simple. Put in a half hitch. Kind of secure the work right there. Now, two options you can do here. If you wanted to, you could wrap wire over top of that. Entirely up to you. The other thing you could do, you could put some UV resin on that, entirely up to you. If you do put some UV resin on it, it will darken the fly up just a little bit, okay? You might can see the difference in that right there. See how it's a little bit darker? See the contrast of that? I think I can see it on the screen. So that's entirely up to you. Once this gets wet, it's going to get darker anyway. Uh, have at it. I find that, I mean, we're just using so many of these bad boys here. They're getting eat up pretty good, so... Uh, I don't really take the time to do anything else to it. The last material in this is some Magic Dub. Uh, this is the same dubbing that I use on my Magic Fly, and I finally believe I come up to the blend of this right here. Uh, I've kind of got this now kind of dialed in, and I'm just putting a little bit on here. I didn't spin it on using my Norvice uh, onto my thread. I just wanted to control that just a little bit, and I just want to put just a smidge easy just like on frenchies people tend to build up too thick of a collar behind the bead you kind of want that kind of small right there it doesn't have to be big and like overwhelm your fly at this point right here we're virtually done i'm going to take my uh, whip finish tool one two three one i'm going to do it one more time okay one two three done oops the perfect i broke my thread right there but it's still secure. We've got redundancy built into it. Okay, just like that. So that fly is complete. So a few tips out of this particular fly that I will give you is um, just to save some time, just do a couple of, uh, of whip finishes in there. Uh, if you're, you, you know, you're going through flies quite a bit, you're tying up, you're fishing a lot, um, you know, they will stay together. 
If you do some redundancy in your flies, they will stay together. That will eliminate a step of putting head cement. Certainly, if you're a head cement person, feel free to do so. But uh, if, if you are uh, wanting to save some time, but still do a very quality tied, good quality tied fly, put in a couple of uh, you know uh, whip finishes right there and you're in good shape. The other thing I do is I keep my scissors in my hands at all times right here. So you guys may have seen that in ladies. Um, that's just something that I do when you tie a lot of flies, you can do, and you get very, very comfortable doing that. As far as the fly itself, it's very effective. Right now, we've got a lot of caddis on the rocks. So if we look at the rocks between your caddis, a few of your, uh, your mayfly nymphs and your stonefly nymphs, when this guy gets wet, it does a great job of really kind of falling into the classification that it covers all of them. So that's what's beautiful about this. It's been working really well. Had to tie some of these up for, for a good buddy over in uh, Haywood County right there back home where I'm from. It's doing really good. But if you want to change the bodies up on it, certainly do so. Um, like here's like the brown. I, I tie them up in brown there as well. Uh, you've seen me kind of do the rainbow before, so kind of do the rainbow color. Uh, certainly if you want to really get out there, you can do a little bit of red or you can do a little bit of purple if you want. The sky's the limit. That's what makes this fly a very versatile fly. It's quick to tie and it produces fish. So anyway, do you have any questions? Feel free to reach me at the shop, 1-828-488-3333. Stop by and see us at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina, or 530 West Main Street, Silva. Shoot me an email. That's Shannon, S-H-A-N-N, at tuckflyshop.com. Uh, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you get more good information. And give our podcast a listen. That's called the Tuckcast with a Splash of Bourbon and all the major podcasting platforms. And we love it. We have fun with it. Thank you, folks, for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video series. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.